Sorry to have taken up your entire Sunday, but I wanted to be sure that you liked the revised script. I hope I've convinced you. Well, there seems to be a reservation or two still. Well, not about the script, Kevin. We're very concerned about the casting. It has to be exactly right. Mm. What do you see? Eva Sanders. Mm, very nice. I've always wanted to work with her. Of course, you know, I could call her directly. I've known her for years. I could help. A direct request from a studio head to read a script. On the other hand, it might suggest there was something wrong with the project, that it needed extra selling. As far as I'm concerned, there's absolutely nothing wrong. No, I'll, uh, I'll send a messenger with a copy over to her agent the first thing in the morning. Mm. What about our mail lead? I've been thinking about Charles Malone or Paul Horway. I've been thinking about Larry Sims. How do you feel about that? Sims. Excellent. Excellent choice. Well, I guess we're all set then. Yeah, I guess so. Except for one little hitch, perhaps. How's that? Eva Sanders has never done a nude scene before. Well, I know. That could be a problem. Could be a real problem. Jody. Nobody socked her. She bumped into my elbow. Oh. Uh -huh. What is the first rule of a carpool? Pete? No socking. Especially girls. Girls are equal. They are not as strong as boys, and you know it. Hey, what's this, Mrs. O'Connell? Are you gonna make another movie? Oh, well, I don't know. It's just, um, uh, just a script that somebody sent to me. Is Flip Wilson going to be in it? No. I mean, I, I don't think so. Well, everybody all set? Yeah. yeah. OK. <laughs> a nude scene. What? They want me to take my clothes off and play a wild nude scene. Are you going to do it? Why not? Everybody's doing it. I gotta read that. It'll be a real gas. <laughs> get me a drink, will you? Mm -hmm. Oh, and get my agent for me before you get the drink. Lee Falco, please. Larry Finn's calling. I got the script. Did you even bother to read it? 
Well, you should have read it. Listen, I got to see you. It's important. Tomorrow. Okay, three o'clock. And Lee, you better read it. Well, I don't know whether you're aware of it or not, but I've never done a nude scene before. Eva, I'm quite aware of that. And I understand your feelings. But the point is the story. It's honest. It's meaningful. And it's a fine part. Oh, it's a beautiful part. Uh, there's, no, there's no doubt now about look, that. Now, look, we'll do everything necessary to make you feel comfortable. And when you're doing the rehearsal, it'll be total privacy. And when you're doing the actual shooting, it will be an absolutely closed set. Oh, now, now what, what does that mean, exactly? That means the minimum number of people necessary will be present. That's six people. The set will be even close to me. Yeah, well, that's um, six or 60. It's still more than the one person I'm used to being nude in front of. Have you uh, talked this over with Tom yet? No, no, I, I uh, well, I guess I've just been putting it off. Your husband is, uh, he's not in the business, but he's got a very good judgment. Yeah, oh, yes, well, I, I, uh, I will be talking with him about it. Eva. Hmm? Now, if you decide to do this, and I sincerely hope that you do, it's got to be a total commitment. Otherwise, it's a waste of your time and of the studios, and it could jeopardize a production. Yes, I understand. Well, I'll, I'll be in touch with you soon, John. All right. In a day or two. Good. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> What I advise you to do this if I didn't think it was right for you? So you take your clothes off. What's the big deal? Oh, John Wayne said the Academy Awards. I work with my clothes on. Wayne only does that for contrast. What do you mean contrast? Because his horse is always naked. Larry, I have a message for you. It's a beautiful part. Take it. But it's the woman's story, Lee. Oh, come on, Larry. You're ducking. It's a great part. And I'll get you the best price you ever got. What about my image? What image? What do you mean, what image? My image is a lover. That's what I play on the screen, Lee. It's what people pay to see. I mean, actual nudity could affect that, couldn't it? Larry, you go on a diet, take a turn at the gym. That'll take care of your image. Well? All right, I'll do it. Do it and enjoy it. Remember, you're collecting 90% of my money. So, do we understand each other about Daddy's medicine bag? Yes. How do we understand each other? I'm not supposed to look into it ever, even if I think there's a surprise in it for me, like a comb and a brush for my dolls that I wanted all my life. Groovy. Hug time? Hug time. <laughs> Daddy, too. Oh, no, 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 no. Daddy's already kissed you goodnight. Just come in for a minute. Jody, baby, tonight Daddy is all mine. I understand. Better say goodnight to the kids. You've already said goodnight. Well, you know how they are. I told them you'd be busy tonight and, and you wouldn't be in again.
Well? Oh, the script. Yes, script. Well, I have one reaction, covering up another, covering up still another. Uh-oh. I suppose I have some kind of a basic Victorian instinct about uh, sex on the screen. Well, so have I. But it's a very moving story. Well, there's such a different attitude today. Healthier attitude, I guess. What else? Well, deep down, I keep thinking about those old movies where they used to cut away just before the big moment. Then you were sitting in the audience munching your popcorn, dreaming up your own scene. Well, I keep thinking that uh, maybe that was the best way. Maybe it was. Hmm. Tom. Hmm? Tell me what to do. Tell you? <laughs> Have I ever told you what to do before? Look, you are a fine talent, a great talent, and that talent should certainly not be allowed to go to waste. I never wanted you to be a stagnating housewife, you know that. One picture a year seems to suit you. And if it, well, if it fulfills you, it makes you happy. You know. And you have enough energy left over for me and the kids. <laughs> well, I don't think you should turn your back on this. Now, but of course, there are the kids to consider. They're, well, they're getting older and more aware. Oh, they're proud of you. And I'm proud of you, too. I still get a kick out of knowing that I have really got you, and then all the others can only look. And I'm going back and forth on this, aren't I? I think you're just trying to be open-minded. But I think you've come to a decision. I'm afraid not. The decision will have to be up to you, honey. Strictly up to you. Read the script? Yeah. Would you do it, Rachel? I mean, a nude scene. In a second. Hmm. Well, come on. I mean, if you've got the body, what's all the fuss about? Anyway, uh, you better make up your mind to it because, well, we're all going to have to do it sooner or later. Would you do it? Hmm? I don't know. I've often wondered about it. But if. Um, Eva Sanders thinks it's right. I guess it's all right. She's a fine actress. She can pick and choose her parts, and she's a woman with a family. Hmm. I got to tell you, that part knocks me out. If she was single, maybe. But she isn't. So what's going to happen to her kids at school once the picture's released? Hmm. I can hear it now. Frankly, I'm surprised the studio is doing it, though. Hmm? Why? By the way, how's your picture coming? Well, I just wish the script were a little more exciting. Like Kevin's. He gets all the plums. A Time for Love? Uh, it's certainly a good piece of writing, but is it really that much more exciting than yours? It is now. Haven't you seen the revisions? Oh, I guess not. There are some pages on my desk, but I haven't had a minute to go through them. They are beautiful. Meaning? Meaning there's a whole lot of skin going on. Laura, you look shocked. Well... Personally, I'm glad to see Bracken finally getting with sex in a big way. Well, couldn't the story be told without it? Doesn't matter whether it could or couldn't. 
Images on the screen are what matter. Movement, color. We're leaving story behind, Laura. But remember the story. Now, what we have is a woman, an attractive, vital, loving woman, happily married. Unfortunately, she, she loses her husband and her only child in an accident. She spends the, the next eight years of her life in loneliness and self-denial. Along comes Mike. She falls in love again. She remarries. Marriage is in trouble from the first day. Why? Because he wants a child. And the thought of having another child terrifies her. Which she doesn't anticipate. No. Which she does not anticipate at all. In fact, to the contrary, she is dismayed and, and stunned by her own repressions and inhibitions. What about Mike? Good old Mike. Well, in the beginning, I think he's, uh, he's patient, he's understanding, committed. And then he gets very nasty. Couldn't we temper that a bit, Kevin? No, no. I really think it's right just the way it is. Look, there's a limit to your patience, isn't there? Uh, an emotionally crippled woman is not exactly what you bargain for, no matter how nice a guy you are. Speaking of, uh, of tempering, that is a, a hairpiece you're wearing, isn't it? You really know how to hurt a guy. <laughs> I, uh, I'd like you to think about losing it for the picture. Why? The film's about real people in direct confrontation, which is why, in the end, Valerie, in desperation, has to aggressively prove her love to Michael or lose him. You mean the nude scene? Mm. And that's going to be quite a feat for Valerie. Oh, it's going to be quite a feat for Eva. By the way, I'm going to be shooting the film in continuity for the most part, so you'll both have a pretty good understanding of your characters long before we ever get to this final uh, sequence. Oh, that's a stay of execution if I ever heard one. Execution? Oh, Eva, you are 100% with me in this, aren't you? I signed to do the picture, didn't I? Mm -hmm. But in blood? <laughs> uh, send her in. Laura? Hello, John. Um, John, I, uh... I just read these revised pages on A Time for Love. Mm, yeah, what about them? Well, this, uh, suddenly this final sequence is explicit, to put it mildly. That was the intention, to make it explicit. Why? Well, to improve it. Laura, I'm, uh, I'm way behind on my work. Is there something else? No, no, that was it. All right, fine. I wasn't aware the studio had changed its policy. Studio policy changes from day to day because that's what the audience is doing. It's a matter of personal judgment on my part. I see. A few sex movies make money and uh, Century Pictures goes down the primrose path too. Hmm? That's being a little prudish, isn't it? John, I work with young people who are burning with ambition. Now, what do I tell them? Oh, forget the talent, honey. Just take off your clothes. Your work with young people has got nothing to do with the time for love. Now, I don't want to discuss this right now, Laura. I'm busy. John, are you planning on releasing this picture under Century's name? Or do you have a special tag for this one? Uh, may I suggest... Peep Show Films presents. Just a minute. Come back in here and sit down. Now, it may not have reached your sensitive eyes and ears yet, but the motion picture industry is a disaster area. Every major studio in town is in deep, deep trouble. 46% of its labor force is unemployed. To which I might add, Laura, you are not. 46%. Now, I will not bore you with the gruesome money details about cutbacks and layoffs and unrecouped negative costs, which are staggering. But I will tell you that today there is a shortage of money, a shortage of product, and a shortage of audience. They no longer come to us. We have got to go to them. With stuff like this? 
That is a superb script. But the, the nudity, the, the blatant sex. Well, what about the family trade? And what about it? Where is it? Go and find it. They don't make family pictures anymore today, because hardly anyone goes to see them. Those days are gone, Laura, and so is that audience. That still doesn't justify dipping into slime like that. Slime? This is a sensitive story about the relationship between a husband and wife. And the nudity is demanded by the story. Oh, congratulations, John. But when I'm out scouting young talent for this studio, if I have to be some sort of flesh peddler now in order to reflect this changing world, you can have my resignation. Laura, we cast Eva Sanders in this part because of her great talent and ability. There was no flesh peddling and there was no private audition. Now all that you have to worry about is talent and ability. Now get out of here. Get out before I accept your resignation. <laughs> Start sounding awfully sadistic. No, no, I mean honest anger. You're hung up, man. You can't stop yourself anymore. And she's the only target you've got left. Okay. Once more, Bobby. Okay, quiet, please. Let's go, ladies. All right, settle down now. Quiet. Roll it. Scene 148. Take two, speed. Concentrating. Action. Okay, so what do we do now? Please, Mike. Please what? I thought we were gonna talk this thing out once and for all. You know how I feel about having another child. And you know how I feel. I just wish you'd told me this before we got married. Why didn't you tell me? I don't know. I... I just didn't know that I'd be like this. You didn't know? Honey, I'm, ju I'm, I'm trying to work it out. Please, just, just be a little patient with me, please. I've been patient, Val. What is there to work out? I want a wife, I want a marriage, and I want a child. Now, am I normal or am I crazy? What is there to work out? Talk to me, Val. Don't just sit there like I'm beating you up. Talk to me. But you are. You are beating me up. You... Just, just stop hammering at me. I'm... I'm trying. I'm trying as hard as I know how. I, I just need help. Can't you see that? Just... Just give me some time, honey. And a little understanding, please. That's all I <laughs> Cut print, that's the one. You talk to you. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. I gotta tell you, man. On the nose. Thank you both. Thank good, you good, both. Good, yeah. All right, next setup, Bobby. Billy, it'll be a close-up on the lady. Right. 
honey, what's the matter with you? What on earth is the matter with you? I'm your husband. and enjoy them in good health. But me, let me find a, a life with a wife and a family. Where are you going? Honey, please don't leave. Why not? What do you need me for? Because I love you. Yeah, sure. I do. Oh, Mike, I do. You've got some sweet way of showing it, Val. Oh. Very nice. Cut it. And that's a print. They are just Excellent. I think so, too. Yes. You're rehearsing a nude scene today, aren't you? Yeah. Close set. We shoot it first thing in the morning. Well, I don't see any problems. Eva seems to... Uh, she's giving so much emotionally. Very free. She's just right. Yeah. George, come on in. I'm ready for you. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Kevin? He's all yours. Hmm. John? How are you? Pretty good. Uh, run the dailies from Street of Dreams, will you please? How's the time for love coming? Excellent. Just excellent. Good. Good. 149, take one, speed. Come over here. What did you say your name was? Alan. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> All right, don't believe me. My name's Lois. Yeah, oh yeah, sure it is, honey. <laughs> don't. Don't. <laughs> Cut. Loved every second of it. Print it. Kill it. Do you have any more? Yeah, two more scenes. Like this? Even better. When did you get the idea that Century was a haven for pornographic films? What? You heard me. Oh, whoa, wait a minute. I thought that with a time for love, I mean, I mean, I thought a whole new thing was starting here. Then you thought wrong, my friend. Centuries in the business of making quality pictures. This is trash. And it was never in the script I approved. A script is only a blueprint, John. Not here it isn't. And studio policy is not made in a soundstage by a director. And to save further conversation, you're off the picture. You're fired. And if anyone wants to make a film about a bedroom frolic for the sake of showing his skin, he is not welcome on this lot. You pass that word along. Who ever thought love could be hard work? It may cure me forever. Yeah, well, it gets better each time you do it. Less stagey, more real. Don't forget, Eva. This is the last roll of the dice for Valerie. She doesn't really know if she can pull it off or not. So any misgivings that you might have about playing this scene, use them. They're right in line with the character's feelings. Same, uh, same goes for you, too, Larry. Mike is actually unprepared for this sudden seduction, so if you have any personal qualms, make them work for you. Qualms? I don't have any qualms. All right. Tell you what I'd like to do. I want to rehearse it one more time before we quit. And I want you both to go home, relax, forget about it, get a good night's sleep, all right? We had a great rehearsal today of the big scene. Oh? Yeah, oh, fine. <laughs> it's funny. First thing tomorrow morning, Larry Sims and I are going to have to walk onto that set and plunge smack dab into the middle of a dreadful marital situation. Well, at least we'll have had our morning coffee.
I set the radio for five. Yeah, you know, I'll sleep through it. No, you won't. You never do. You'll groan and grumble and curse the movie business. Come to bed. It's a little tense around here. Look, I, I, I'm just beat, Eva. I'm, I'm much too tired to go to sleep. Well, who said anything about sleep? Honey, I, I am beat. Okay. This isn't fair to you, Barn. If I don't know when I'll get to sleep, and my reading will just keep you awake. I might as well finish this in the den. Good night. Tom. I need your support. And I want to give it a... I've been struggling with this thing. I started to call you at the studio this afternoon on the set. I wanted to tell you that I was... that I was with you, and whatever you did was right. But the minute the operator said, Sentry Studios, I hung up. I want to say something to you at dinner tonight. And I want to say something now. But I can't. I, I just can't. Senior. Will do. All right, Bob, we're ready. Okay, thanks, Billy. Okay, Kevin, we're ready to go. Uh, get rid of anybody and everybody who doesn't have to be here. I want to talk to the crew that gets the shot right here at the camera. Mm -hmm. All right, let's quiet down, everybody. Now, we're closing the set, so if you don't have to be here, let's move out. You fellas up on the grid, come on down. We're closing it. Okay, I'll check the set, and then I'll send the others over. Thank you. You're all professionals. But for those of you who haven't worked on a close set of mine before, I don't want to see or hear anything from anybody. I don't want to see anything but deaf, dumb, and blind people doing their job, okay? Now, if anybody fouls up just once, I'm going to have to bounce you right off the picture, and I mean right off. All right. You know what you have to do. Thank you very much. for you, Larry. Yes? We're all set. Places, please. Okay. 
Coca-Cola, please. Scene 149, take one, speed. Eva? Oh, Mike. If you only knew how much I do love you. Please don't go. Please. I love you. Then prove it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, Kevin. Uh, Kevin. Sorry, Larry. Can I just uh, see just for a second? Oh, can we just uh, just we just take a few more minutes? Well, you uh, you know what the scene is about. You know what you have to do. There's no point in putting it off anymore. Oh no 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 no. That's that's fine. I'm all right. No, I just I'm just uh, a little nervous. I'd like to catch my breath. That's all. Just a few minutes, okay? And then we do it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Sorry, Larry. I'm done. Right back. Just one second. Set. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. You did well. Let's get ready for take two. Come in. Butterflies. How could you tell? Oh, boy. Eva, mm -hmm. you're a beautiful actress. You know I think that. But aren't you working on the wrong image? Oh, you're working the way a good actor should. You're drawing on your own life, your own experience, and making it work in the part. But in this case, maybe, well, just maybe, you're getting a little hung up on Eva Sanders and her relationship with her husband. Instead of this chick, this Valerie. Larry, you're worried too, aren't you? Come on, Eva. Am I the worrying type? Larry. All right, yes. I've been worried from the very beginning. Eva, if you can get Kevin to change the scene, I'll support you. I mean it, I will. If you can get him to just consider it. Thanks, thanks, Larry, thanks. Thanks. You better say. You've got to change it. Change it? How can I change it? That's the scene. But why does it have to be played nude? Eva, that's the scene. But there must be some other way to do it. That is the scene. Do you believe in it? It's absolutely valid. Yeah, but I mean, Kevin, do you really believe in yes, it? Yes, I do. And in this kind of filmmaking? The whole story builds to it. And you really believe that actors should have to go through this? In this scene, in this film, yes. And you don't think that this is just pandering to the sickest element of the audience? No, I do not. Not for one minute. Eva, you are going through some kind of personal agony. And I would do anything to spare you that. But I have to think that 
this is your problem and not a problem with the scene. I, uh, I don't know what to do. I'll try to rewrite, change it, fake it somewhere. I don't know how without destroying the story, but... I will try. Kevin? What? I'll do it. It is my problem. Larry? I just want you to remember one thing. You keep him in this room. Okay. Right. Hit the lights, yeah. please. What's on the bell? All right, this is the one. Roll it, please. Scene 149, take two, speed. Eva? Oh, Mike. If you only knew how much I do love you. Please don't go. Please. I love you. Then prove it. All right. so often before, but not now. Not now. to bite people. Hmm. How was the studio? My director bit me. Mom. <laughs> no, my director liked what I did today, so how about that? What'd you do today? A very difficult scene. What was it about? Hug time. Hug time. <laughs> oh. Wait a minute. Pete, come on in here a minute. He's making an airplane. Oh? What do you want, Mom? I'm working on this model airplane. Come on in, just for a minute. Come on, sit down here. I want to tell you both about what I did today. I played the part of a woman named Valerie who was afraid to have a child. And her husband, named Mike, was so angry with her that he was just about ready to leave her. So Valerie finally agreed, since she really loved him very much, and she really did, that she would try to have his baby. You mean sex? I mean love. Valerie and Mike, husband and wife, made love so that they could have a child to love. That's my story, Mom. Yeah. It sure is. 
All right. Hi. You know something? What? Valerie and Mike, they sound like very nice people. Hey, come on. I'm on a tight schedule. I got the glue all ready for my model airplane. In a minute, Pete. Hi, Duty. Hi, Dad. Okay, Pete. Let's, uh, let's go glue up your problem. to sell the picture. It's simple, it's to the point. Yes, that it is, but it's old-fashioned. I want something that's provocative. Yes. Mr. Bracken, do you have a minute for Laura Dean? Beverly, I'm in a meeting. Ask Laura to come back, will you? No, just a minute. I'll send her in. Yes, sir. John? Laura, you know Joe Lyons. Of course. How are you, Joe? Laura? I won't take a minute of his time. Uh, John, I just saw the first cut of A Time for Love, and you were right. I was not offended. I was deeply moved. Good. Good. I'm delighted. As a matter of fact, we're just going over the advertising campaign for the picture. Joe, what do you think of, quote, how far should a movie go? Answer, as far as A Time for Love, unquote. That's a provocative phrase, John. Let me go work it up. Good. Hey, isn't that more or less what I said to you? How far should a movie go? Answer, not as far as a time for love. It does have a familiar ring, doesn't it? John, I am terribly sorry I blew up like that. Laura, I don't mind anybody arguing with me about company policy. As long as I know they're going to change their mind. <laughs> Get on your horse, I'm still busy. Beverly, get me Simmons in the London office, will you? Yeah. 